ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯಿಸಿ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭಾ ಪರಸ್ಥ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿ ಶೀಘ್ರ ಶೀಘ್ರ ಸಂಚಾತ್ರ ಸಕೋಲ ಸಾವಲೋಚನೆ ಪರಾಕರಿಷ್ಯ ಸೀತಮ When a youth is radiant in fair form, he resembles light with gold and amber colors. In his lotus face defeats the splendor of the effulgence of millions of the sun and moon, and whose eyes, restless like those of the young Chikora bird, make various astonishing expressions at each moment. When will you make me the recipient of your merciful sidelong words? Madan Malati Upane Pramola Mana Mandite Priyanu Raga Ranjite Kala Vilasa Pandite Ananya Dhanya Kunta Raja Kama Keli Kovide Kadakadisha Siyamam Kripaka Taksha Bhajanam O oh, you who are intoxicated by your youthfulness, who are decorated with the delightful ornament of sulky anger, who revels in your lover's attachment to you, and who are supremely proficient in the art of loving affairs, O oh, you who are the most learned in knowing of loving sports within the realm of your confidential, auspicious forest groves, When will you make me the recipient of your merciful sidelong glance? Ashesha, Ashesha, Hara, Hara, Dhira, Dhira, Hara, Bhushite, Prabhuta, Shata, Kumba, 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 Sushtani, Prashashta, Manda, Hasya, Churna, Purna, Sokya, Sagare, O you who are decorated with the ornaments of Anupag, such as Hava and Hava, and a diamond, diamond necklace of gentleness and gravity, whose breasts are like water pots made of pure gold, and which resembles the twin mounds on the head of an elephant. O you whose glorious gentle smile is like an ocean full of bliss, when will you make me the recipient of your merciful sidelong glance? Mina lava lavare taranga ranga durlate latagala shalola ni lalocha navalokane O you whose arms are like the tender stems of a lotus swaying in the water's waves, whose glance from blue eyes resembles the tips of creepers dancing in the breeze, who allure Man Mohan to follow you, and upon meeting him steal away his mind and give him shelter in his state of enchantment, when will you make me the recipient of your merciful sidelong glance? Sivarna Mali Kanchita Chireka Kambu Tantra Jai Chisucha Mangali Hina Chiratna Dipti Dipite Salola Nila Kuntala Prasuna Vicha Kuntite Kadakarisha Sina Monkey Paka Takshabajan. O you whose neck is marked with three lines of Kancha and is adorned with golden necklaces and an auspicious Trisutra glowing with three kinds of brilliant gems. O you whose bluish black tresses, interwoven in a braid with clusters of flower blossoms, sway to and fro. When will you make me the recipient of your merciful sidelong glance? Nitanga linda landa mana pushpane kalapane Prashashta ratna kintire kalapana dhyamani Karinda sunda dandi pavara vaso vajayati Kalakarisha siha manki bhaka taksha bhajana O you from whose rounded hips hangs a wreath of essence 
Except she didn't have her <laughs> baby to put down. <laughs> Cheryl wanted to do the session. Ananta koti Vishnu loka namra padma jarchite ti madrija pulomaja urinchi javara prale apara siddhi riddhi digda sat padanguli nake kada karishya sihama kripa kataksha bhajan O you who are worshipped by Lakshmi Devi, the mistress of unlimited Vaikuntha planets, and who bestows benedictions upon Sri Parvati, Indrani, and Saraswati. Even one of the nails of your lotus feet gives rise to an infinite variety of spiritual perfections. O oh, when will you make me the recipient of your merciful sidelong glance? Maheshwari Kishwari Swadeshwari Shureshwari Triveda Bharatishwari Pramana Shashaneshwari Rameshwari Shameshwari Pramoda Kananeshwari Rajeshwari Vratadipe Shiradike Namostute O mistress of all kinds of sacrifices and all activities of the mantras uttered during yajna, of all the gods, of the teachings of the three Vedas, of the enforcement of all scriptural principles, of the goddess of fortune, of forgiveness, and of the delightful forest of Vrindavan, O mistress and mistress of Raj, O Srimati Radhika, I offer my pranam unto you. that will be destroyed. The, the karma which is um, uh, present, which is in its seed form, and which is... Uh, <laughs> well, just below is a footnote. Oh, there is. And it describes oh, what are the three? Okay, yeah. Accumulated reactions, fructifying reactions, and reactions in current. So concurrent activities. What are accumulated reactions? Actions of a lifetime? Yeah. Yes. The human 
huge mountain. Yeah, that's what uh, Bhakti Srup Shidamar said, like a huge mountain. And then in a particular lifetime, then a portion of that is taken. When you take in another body, a portion of that mountain is taken. And it's called a, uh, like a kuta, kuta, anakut. Kuta means fill. So then all the rest is remaining. Uh, and generally, the conditioned souls, they're even accumulating more. Mm -hmm. Right? So those are, uh, there's prarabdha karma, aprarabdha karma. There's also kuta and bij. So the thing is that here it is saying that bhaveta daiva sanchita three rupa, three different types, three, three rupa karma, nashanam, will be destroyed. So how does that take place? that all three stages are destroyed. Because from karma, from jnana, from yoga, uh, those uh, reactions that are currently taking place, mm -hmm. they can be destroyed, but not all the accumulated. Mm -hmm. Only bhakti can do that. So, uh, Bhakti Sridharas was explaining nicely that for the devotee, Krishna is helping while we are in this current body and we have this current kuta, hill of our reactions, right? But what Krishna does is he gives you a token. Prabhupada used that term, token punishment, mm -hmm. just a token. And what he does is he arranges from that mountain tons and tons of it to be also destroyed simultaneously by the one little suffering or something. Also enjoyment, because you have sinful and pious, mm -hmm. this mountain is made of. And they're only uh, accumulated from human activities, right? Yes. You know, the animals and other species, they, they don't create any karma. Neither does anyone create any karma in the heavenly planets, nor do they create any karma in the hellish planets. This is the field of karma. It's called the field. This is where the conditioned souls are acting out their desires, and they're simultaneously creating new uh, karma reactions. Uh, but for the devotee, that process becomes destroyed completely, right? That's what is meant here. Tri lupa karma nashanam. By your mercy, my three types of karma will be destroyed, and at that moment, at that moment, I will enter the circle of the son of the king of Braja and his dear most sakis. All right, so... Chandraya, Tadikaya Itadale, Krishnaya, Krishna Bhaktaya, Tadabhaktaya Namo Namaha, Namo Vishnu Tadaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutane, Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Tunamani, Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunyavari, Paschatya Vishatarani. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale <coughs> Shrimati Bhakti Rakshak Shri Dara Goswami Nitinamani Namo Vishnu Padaya Radhikai Priyatmane Shri Shrimad Bhakti Vedanta Naraya Nitinamani Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika Guru Dhari Shri Shri 
Radha Govinda Juki Jai Shri Jagannatha Baladeva Subhadra Sudarshan Chakra Juki Jai <coughs> Shri Giriraj Govardhana Ki Jai <coughs> Shri Nitai Gauranga Ki Jai Shri Nishinda Bhagavan Ki Jai <coughs> Om Ajnana Timaranda Siya Jnana Jiva Shalasana Chakshurim Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Vansha Kalpatarubascha Krita Sindhu Vedacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namo Mahabadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gauda Tishinamo Hey Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanda Radha Kanta Namostuti Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vrindai Tulsidebhai Priya Keshavasyacha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shirasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare They must have some some floodlights or something in the room, I can tell you Huh? Yeah, I can see them. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. First of all, I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams and my shraddha pushpanams. These are my most worshipful, beloved sikhs. Nitya Lila Pravishto and Vishnu Pad, Paramahansa Astatara Satasushila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada, Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Stutara Sata Sri Shila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Stutara Sata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj and I'm praying for their causeless mercy that we can read and chant the glories of Sri Braj Mandala Parikrama from the book of our and experience and taste even one tiny little drop. Uh, Srila Gurudev told for the Brajmandala Parikrama, he said, what will be the success of your Parikrama? That even a tiny drop of separation you can feel. Even a tiny drop little drop. That will be the success. So by hearing about it, Radha and Krishna's pastime, especially being in the town where they were performed, in the association under the guidance of Rasik Mahabhagwat Bhavuk Vaishnavas, uh, very deep impression comes from that. And by continuing to follow uh, every year until we leave this body, this Rajamandala Parikrama uh, observance, at least by reading, hearing, remembering, uh, chanting all the kirtans and songs. And in this way, also, so much mercy will flow to us, and we can also receive very good impressions from this which will enable us gradually to come to this pathway of Rag Mark Bhakti. So now, we're continuing with uh, Srila Gurudev's uh, part one of his book called The Nature of Vraja. Now, just to review a little bit, yesterday, Gurudev's first words in opening this chapter was to quote a particular line which tells what is the meaning, the original understanding of this word, Raja. 
So the, the, the Sanskrit term is called Vrajati Gachati Iti Vrajaha. So this means that which moves around, which moves around, that is Vraja. Iti Vrajaha. So this is the original understanding of the word Vraja. The places where Nanda Baba dwelt and moved around with his cows, calves, family, and associates are called Vraja. Then he quotes another line. He's not saying from which Shastra this is. Then he says, Vrajanti Gava Yasmin Nati Vrajaha. Vrajanti Gavaha Yasmin Nati Vrajaha. That means the land where the cows, here's the word Gavaha, cows. So the land where the cows, the cowherd men, cowherd boys, and cowherd girls wander is known as Vraja. We want to belong to that, uh, what is the word in English, people that wander, nomadic? nomadic. No. There's another word for that? Nomadic? Yeah, no, nomadic. It's a nomadic tribe, an eternal nomadic tribe. Uh, we want to belong to that tribe of cowherd people, right? And we want to have our relationship with the king and queen huh? and the prince and princess mm -hmm. of that tribe. Mm -hmm. This is our ultimate goal of perfection. Yes, so Braja particularly denotes the land, the land of the Supreme Person, Brajendra Nandan, Sri Krishna's pastime. So in the next paragraph, Guru Dave is, we spent a bit of time discussing this very wonderful way in which Guru Dave is presenting this personality, the hero of Raja. He's very flirtatious. He uses that term. <laughs> very flirtatious. So that very flirtatious hero of Raja, Sri Krishna, what is he? Akil, Prasamrita, Murti. What is, where is that line coming from? Akila what? Akila Samrita Kundi. Right. From which part of it? This is very easy to remember. I told it yesterday. The first three words. Mm -hmm. The very first uh, verse composed by Rupa Goswami. Mm -hmm. This is the first three words of that verse. Akil Rasamrita Murti. So what is Rasa Amrita? Mm -hmm. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Akil Rasamrita Murti. What is rasa amrita? Like taste, uh, nectar. Taste is also used. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and what does akil, akil mean? Because it's denoting Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna is akil rasamrita murti. Yeah, complete. He is the complete form, murti of all rasa. Rasamrita, all ball nectar. So Gurudev says the embodiment of the nectar of all primary and secondary spiritual tastes or rasas. So we went into that yesterday talking about the primary and the secondary. How many primary rasas are there? How many secondary rasas? Yes. So, this verse is describing, it's, it's like the introductory verse of the entire work, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And 
here it's being told how Krishna being how Krishna being the embodiment of all rasa he has overpowered all the different groups of gopis and ultimately Srimati Radhika by attracting them so he this Akhil Vasamrita Murthy Krishna, he performs his eternal pastimes with Srimati Radhika, who is the embodiment of what? What is she the embodiment of? We have just heard what Krishna is the embodiment of. Yeah. Huh? Loving. Ananda? No. Brain. Loving. What Ananda? Prema Ras. More. Uh, yes. Mahabra. Yeah. Yes. She is the embodiment of Mahabhav. So what is Mahabhav? Mahabhav is called the essence of Sri Krishna's Vladini Shakti Pramasi. It's described like this in Chaitanya Charitamrita, fourth chapter where Radha Tattva is explained. In the essence uh, of bhav, the, actually Ladini Shakti potency, the essence of that is bhav. Uh, or, uh, sorry, the essence of that is prem. There's a sequence of verses that explain this. Taking the sar, the essence, of Ladini Shakti potency, that energy, which is Radhika herself. But her, she is the embodiment of the essence of the essence of the essence. The essence of, of Ladini Shakti is Prem. The essence of Prem is Bhav. And the essence of Bhav is Mahabhav. So, Shimati Radhika is the embodiment of Mahabhav the essence of Sri Krishna's pleasure potencies and his other associates. So that means in Vraja, he's performing his eternal pastimes with Srimati Radhika, who is the embodiment of Mahabhav, and also with his other associates. He's performing all these pastimes in Vraja. So this most exalted of nectar-filled pastimes which most exalted of all nectar-filled pastimes? Dasarila. Yes. So, the most exalted of all nectar-filled pastimes, namely Sri Krishna's Ras Lila, and his numerous other pastimes, take place here eternally. In this Vraja, every glance and gesture is filled with rasa. Here, the original enjoyer, Sri Govinda, he eternally enjoys nectar-filled sports and pastimes with those gopis who have manifested from his own intrinsic form, Swarupa Bhuta Gopis. These pastimes have no beginning and no end. The place where there is nothing but an endless ocean of praying whose waves of the most elevated, radiant, mellow, of intimate paramour love, Unnatu Ujvala Pranaya Rasa. There is nothing but an endless ocean of prem whose waves of the most elevated, radiant, mellow, of intimate paramour love, they are constantly rising up and swelling over. That is Braja. That place is called Braja. That place consisting purely of rasa, consisting purely of rasa, that is continuously savored by those experts in relishing loving mellows, namely rasikas, and those who can taste transcendental mellows. They're called bhavakas. There's two types. 
There, there, this is called the land of Brahma. So you know, at the third shloka of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Nigamakalpataror Galitam Falam Shukamukad Amrita Drava Samhitam Pivata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Mahur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavaka. Here in the last line, Srila Vyasadeva is telling you that all, all of you, aho, all of you who are Rasika and who are also Bhavaka, now you should drink this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, which is what? The nectar juice that is emanating from the ripened fruit of all the Vedic literature, from the tree of Vedic literature, Nigamakalpa Tarora, Galitamphalam, means ripened fruit, Shukamukad Amrita, Drava Samhitam. It has emanated from the mouth of Shukadeva Goswami, and thus it has become even more sweet and tasteful. You know the comparison? To the parrot, the parrot has some ability to do what with its beak? To taste the mango and make it sweeter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By his biting it with the beak, it makes the mango sweeter. Shukamukad amrita, this nectar, drava samyutam, means just fruit, uh, sorry, just juice. This dr drinkable nectarine juice. Pibata. Pivata means drink. Pivata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. You Rasik Vaishnavas, you Bhavok Vaishnavas, now Pivata Bhagavatam. Now you drink this Bhagavatam, which is Rasam Alayam, simply full of Ras. So Gurudev is telling me, those who can taste the transcendental mellows, the Bhavakas, and those who are continuously savoring all of these rasas that are flowing in braja, they're called rasikas. They're expert in relishing these mellows. Then there's a verse that is describing by one of the gopis in the 44th chapter of the 10th canto. And this, this gopi is actually glorifying the land of Braja. And she's describing why this land is so supremely pure and blessed. She's telling, O oh, Saki, Punya Bata Braja Bhuvo Yadayam Nrilinga Gudha Purana Purushovana Chitra Marya Gapalayan Sahabala O Saki, the actual truth is that the land of Braj is supremely pure and blessed because here the Supreme Person is living disguised as a human being. Nri Linga means in the disguise of a human. That same Lord, whose lotus feet are worshipped by the Lord of all Lords, Mahadev Shankar, and by Sri Rama Devi, that same Lord wanders about here with his brother, Balaram, and his cowherd boyfriends, and adorned with a garland of multicolored flowers, he grazes the cows, and he plays the flute sweetly. Absorbed in many kinds of pastimes, he wanders here and there with delight. And by the touch of his lotus feet, this land of Braj has become virtuous and successful. What a beautiful glorification. Huh? Where was this? This is 10th Canto, 44th chapter. 
Now, Gurudev is also quoting another beautiful definition of the word Vraja from the Skanda Purana. It's a short verse. It is saying, Guna titam param brahma vyapakam vraja uchyate sadanandam param jyoti muktanam padam avyayam. Means, Guna titam param brahma. Param brahma, the supreme absolute truth, is Guna titam. That means he's beyond the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And, Vyapakam Vraja Uchyate. Vyapakam means all pervading. So, Vyapakam Vraja Uchyate. That means because he pervades every single particle of the universe, he is called Vraja. His place, the embodiment of eternity, knowledge, and bliss, Sadanandam Param Jyoti. This place, which is the embodiment of eternity, knowledge, and bliss, it is Param Jyoti. It is supremely brilliant. And also, uh, Padam Avyayam means indestructible. So residing here, who resides there? In Braja are the supreme connoisseurs of ecstatic transcendental mellows who are liberated from material existence. Now, yesterday we began about the topic of Goloka and Vraja. And Vraja has parentheses, the word Gokul. So, Goloka and Gokul. Now, he quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, chapter 5. And here is a description of Gokul. <coughs> Sarvopari Shri Gokula, Vraja Loka Dham, Shri Goloka, Shveta Dvipa, Vrindavana Nam. That means that Shri Gokul, which is uh, the topmost abode, Sarva Upari means it's above every other. Sarva Upari means that Shri Gokul is above every other abode. Vraja Loka Dham. So there are various names for that same place, Gokul. What are they? Vraja is also called Vraja. It is also called Goloka. It is, it is also called Goloka, that place. Vraja, Goloka, also called Shvetadvip and also called Vrindavan. So four names are given as like synonyms in addition to the name Gokula. So Gurudev is explaining, thus these names are all considered synonymous. Now Srila Rupa Goswami, an intimate associate of Sriman Mahaprabhu, he resolves any confusion about Gokula and Goloka in his book called Sri Lagu Bhagavatamrita. There he says, Yattu Goloka Nama Syach Tachcha Gokula Vaibhavam Tad Atmya Vaibhavavatan Chatasya Tan Mahimonate Mahimonate. So here's Rupa Goswami's statement. He's telling. Here, he states here that the glory of Gokula is identical with the glory of Goloka. In fact, Goloka is merely the glory of Gokula. So again, he states here that the glory of Gokula is identical with the glory of Goloka. In fact, Goloka is merely the glory of Gokula. And similarly, Vrindavan and Gokula are simply different names for Raja. Now, in the second verse of the Brahma Samhita, it describes this Gokula Dham. 
Sahatra Sahasra Patra Kamalam Gokul Akyam Mahatpadam Gokul Akyam Mahatpadam Sahasra Patra Kamalam Tat Karnikara Tat Dhamma Tat Anantamsha Sambhavam So now this is the second verse of the Brahma Samhita. And if you've ever read the Brahma Samhita, you know that first verse is telling about Krishna. What is the first verse of the Brahma Samhita? The kids have been learning it in the school. Now the teachers can also tell it. Yes. We can all say it together. Beginning again. Ishvara Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vigra, Anandaya Yuga, Sarva Karana Karana. Translation? The kids have learned it, but you haven't. He has the eternal spiritual physical body. He's the of all. He has no other origin, and he is the prime cause of all karma. So that invocation verse by Lord Brahma is describing Krishna. Who he is. But the following verses are describing where he lives. Mm -hmm. And so the, the first verse in that flow of verses that describes Gokul, Goloka Vrindavan, this is the first verse cited by Lord Brahma. So we're going to the explanation of the meaning of this verse by Bhakti Thakur as follows, because Bhaktivinoda Thakur is the one who wrote the commentary that we have in our Gurudev's book. Jiva Goswami also wrote a commentary, and in Gurudev's book, both of them are there. And Gurudev added something as well. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur has explained the meaning of this verse as follows. Maha Vaikuntha, Maha Vaikuntha, or Paravyom Dham, is eternally situated beyond the Viraja River. What is the Viraja River? <clears throat> Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar used to refer to it on a number of occasions in a number of contexts. What is the Viraja? The separation it's... between material and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is outside of the influence of the modes of nature, and it is the viraja, like a river, that separates the material creation from the spiritual creation. So he says, Mahavaikunta or Paravyom Dham, which we know, that is eternally situated beyond the viraja river. This holy abode is the embodiment of three divine opulences. Which holy abode? Mahavaikunta, Paravyom. Hmm? So what are those three divine opulences that this Mahavaikunta is the uh, embodiment of? One is imperishability, being imperishable. Imperishable, never ever eternally changing at all. It does not diminish. Nothing diminishes there. The second one, freedom from all sorrow. There is no sorrow. And no lamentation there. Vaikunta, you remember how Prabhupada explained? Vaikunta? Yeah, means what? Kunta means what in Anxiety. this context? Yes. Yes. And vai means having none. Freedom from. So vai kunta. Right? And the third, the third opulent, divine opulence of that realm is the freedom from all types of fear. There is no fear there. Now, the extremely sweet Gokul, otherwise known as Goloka, which is full of unlimited transcendental opulence. Unlimited. Unlimited transcendental opulence. It is situated beyond that Paravyom Dham, far beyond. 
Sometimes Goloka is also called Gokula. But Goloka is actually the opulence or the manifestation of Gokul, the abode of all sweet pastimes. Now this is a Siddhantic point that as we were told, Rupa Goswami, he has been explaining this in his Lagu Bhagavatamrita. And Jiva Goswami went into much detail. Now, Goloka and Gokula. Sometimes Goloka is also called Gokula, but Gokula is actually the opulence or the manifestation of Gokul. Goloka is actually the opulence or the manifestation of Gokul, which is the abode of all sweet pastimes. This holy abode, this Gokul Dham, radiant as Goloka or Gokula, it appears in the form of Gokul below Vaikuntha on the earth planet. And that is what this Dham on our earth planet actually is. It is also called Gokula, is it not? Because she was born in Gokul. Yeah. Is he born in the prison house of Kansa? Mm. No. Krishna is born in Gokul. And this land of Gokul, as we sing in the first verse of the Dhammadarashtakam, it is the first verse of Dhammadarashtakam. Dhammadarashtakam. Sachidananda Rupam. Lasat Kundanam. So here, Nama Ishwara. Krishna, the Supreme Ishwara. We're reading now in the Dhammadarashtakam book. Uh, so, Ishwara Parama Krishna. So, that Ishwara, he's offering a base, Nama Ishwara Sachidananda Rupa, who has a beautiful transcendental form made of Sachit Ananda. Lasat Kundalam, uh, his earrings are swinging to and fro, and Gokule Brajamanam. What does that mean? In Gokul, Gokule Brajamanam, he is eternally, radiantly manifested there in Gokul. So here, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, that sometimes Goloka is also called Gokula, but Goloka is actually the opulence or the manifestation of Gokul. So that spiritual abode in the spiritual world can be called Goloka, can be called Gokula, but the proper understanding is that Goloka is the manifestation uh, of the opulence of Gokul, which is the abode of all sweet pastimes. And then he tells, this Gokul, this holy abode, radiant as Goloka or Gokula, it appears in the form of Gokul below Vaikuntha on the earth planet. Even though it's far beyond the Virija, far beyond Vaikuntha, oh, here in this circumstance, it now appears on the earth planet. Huh? Now, in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, the quintessence of all scriptures, Srila Sanatana Goswami writes in this connection, Yata Kridati Tad Bhumao Golo Kepi Tatai Vasa Adha Urdvataya Bedo Nayo Kalpyeta Kevala. This is the verse that he writes there. It's in the second part of the Vriya Bhagavatamrita. Gurudev is saying that that book is the quintessence of all scriptures. Did you know that? What is quintessence? Huh? What is quintessence? Yeah. Like the essence, the quintessence, like the ultimate essence. And did you know that that book, written by Sanatana Goswami, was the first book written by any of the Goswamis? Did you know that? Yes. This is the first book. 
written by even before Rupa Goswami wrote Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So Gurudev spent his last couple of years lecturing on the Brihad Bhagavatamrita at festivals and here in New Braj. Very important literature, and he's also given that to us. Still has to be completed in English. It's kind of completed, <laughs> but some work remains to put it into English. So, <clears throat> the meaning of this, of this verse, is that Krishna's pastimes in Gokul, which is situated on the material plane, are the same as those in Goloka. Sanatana so Goswami is writing this. His pastimes here on the material plane, because there are very various persons, they say, no, no, his pastimes are different than in the spiritual world. No? Krishna's pastimes in Gokul, which is situated on the material plane, are the same as those in Goloka. The only difference, huh? here it is, the only difference between Goloka and Gokula is that Goloka is situated in the highest region and Gokul manifests on the earthly plane. So, any comments or questions at this point? Yeah. I thought that in uh, Goloka there was only the idea that yeah, yeah. Pastimes, that, that's another further difference being explained. But he's basically saying here that the real only difference is that one is situated there in the highest region and Gokul manifests on the earth, earthly plane. Now in the Krishna Sandarbha, Sri Jiva Goswami has accepted Golo Go Goloka as the manifestation of Vrindavan. There's a footnote, but he's only making that statement. That in the Krishna Sandarva, Sri Jiva Goswami has accepted Goloka as the manifestation of Vrindavan, meaning this Vrindavan here. Huh? Next section is saying Vraja, the eternal abode of Parakya Bhav, the mood of unwedded amorous love. Now, this is a very important discussion uh, because there are, are various sections of Vaishnavas that say, oh, this Parakya Ras? No, it does not exist there in the spiritual world. So, in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 4, 47, Srila Kavaraj Goswami states, Parakya Bhave Ati Rasera Ullas. Vraja Bina Ihar Anyatra Nahi Vas. Srila Bhakti Thakur comments on this verse in his <coughs> Amrita Pravaha Bhashya, saying, Many people think that Sri Krishna is performing his pastimes eternally in Goloka, and he appears in Braj for a very short time just to perform his pastimes in Parakya Bhav, the mood of unwedded amorous love. Did you follow that? What do some people think? Do you think that Krishna's Nityavila, his eternal pastimes are going on eternally there, in Goloka, in the Nityadam? Hmm? Uh, and he appears here on this plane in Braja for a short time just to perform his pastimes in Parakya Bhav, the mood of unwedded amorous love. This, however, is not the opinion of our Gaudiya Goswamis who accept also the pastimes of Braja on this plane as eternal. They are equally as eternal. So, Vraja is the name of the absolute inner chamber of the transcendental and eternal Goloka Dham. The same pastimes Sri Krishna performs in Vrindavan on earth, including 
those of Kalakia Ras. <coughs> they transpire eternally in the supremely situated eternal Raja Dham. Very important point to know. As Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta of our Goswamis, of all of our Rupanuga Acharyas. This is firmly established. Because some persons are saying, what? That no, Paraki above, it is only exhibited here, not there. There are some who also say that there is no separation of pastimes there, only meeting. Mm -hmm. Gurudev has so much spoken the actual facts about this. So it's very important to understand because there are certain sections even in Vrindavan who do not accept that the unwedded married love of the gopis is actually going on eternally in the Nityadam. So, now Srila Kaviraj Goswami, he states again in Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila chapter 3, Ashtavimsha chatur juge dvaparer shesh vrajera sahitahoy krishnera prakashi. Here, the words vrajera sahita, vrajera sahita means along with vraja. Sahita means together with. So these words clarify that also existing in the transcendental Golokatam is one inconceivably sweet abode named Vraja. So that Vraja is manifest here, but it is also there. Hmm? This Vraja lies within the inner chambers of Goloka. The inner chambers. This is because the supreme mellow of Parakya Ras is present there with qualities unlimitedly superior to those found anywhere else in Goloka. In the supreme abode, right? Goloka Vrindavan. There is the inner chamber of Raj. And there is the full, complete manifestation of the mood of Parakya Rasa. Even, even in the Braj manifested on this earth planet, <clears throat> the living entities have been able to directly witness the variegated nature of the unmanifest Braj in the transcendental realm. Prakat and aprakat, manifested and unmanifested. So even the living entities here who live on this plane in Braja of the earth planet, they have directly witnessed that variegated nature of the aprakat, the nityadam, in the transcendental realm. So besides prakata prakash, prakata prakash means the manifest appearance, and aprakat prakash, the unmanifest appearance. So besides prakat prakash and aprakat prakash, the only remaining mystery is that on earth there is also a drishyaman prakash. You heard that term before? Drishyaman prakash. What is that? This is the vision that ordinary people have of Vrindavan and other holy abodes when the pastimes are no longer manifest there. Just like if we go, we have a what we can see with our eyes. We can also see Giriraj. We can also see Yamuna Devi. But this is called Drishya Man Prakash. Drishya means your vision, your sight. You are able to see with your eyes. So, Prakat manifestation and the Aprakat manifestation. What is Prakat manifestation? when Krishna performs his pastimes on this planet, while he is <coughs> there in Vrindavan, in Braja. And aprakat means what? Unmanifest. 
Why did the six Goswamis go and wander all around Braj calling out, Hey Radhe, Brajadevike, Jalalite? Why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself want to come to Braj and he tried and only succeeded on the third time? What was the first time? As soon as he took sannyas, whoosh, I'm going to Vrindavan. But there was something that go to Vrindavan. He was sidetracked by Nityananda Prabhu. And then his sannyas pastimes began. Then he went down to Jagannath Puri, right? And then he traveled in South India for a number of years. Then he returned to Jagannath Puri. And then what did he do? He Don't made an attempt to go to Vrindavan. But there are so many people following him. By the time he came to Kanai Natashala. Is that when Nishringananda Brahmachari was in his meditation? You've probably seen the painting in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. In his, he was meditating on building this road that Mahaprabhu was walking on, which was filled with jewels and beautiful flowers. He was decorating the entire road from Jagannath Puri all the way to Vrindavan. Right? Mental, uh, what do you call it? construction project. <laughs> he was going along, 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 and he was telling where Mahaprabhu will be going. But then suddenly he came to a place called Kanai Natashala, and there his meditation broke. And he told everyone, he told everyone, Mahaprabhu is not going to Vrindavan, he will not make it that far. And that's exactly what happened. That was the second attempt. And that's when Mahaprabhu met who? Sanatana and Rupa and their brother Anupam. He met them near that place. Who was it that advised him not to go with such a throng of people? That was there, Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana. Because Sanatana and Rupa had not left the ministership of the Nawab Hussein Shah yet at that point. And they had written to Mahaprabhu. You know, there was a correspondence. And they wrote to Mahaprabhu that we have become so degraded and so fallen, please come and rescue us. And then Mahaprabhu came there. So his path, he exhibited this pastime of not going, right, all the way to Vrindavan yet. And at that point also, Srila Sanatana Goswami, who was the chief minister of the Nawab, I mean, this is like being, you know, the, one of the highest positions in the whole government. And he told him, he said, Actually, according to the Shastras, this is not the suitable way to visit the holy town with throngs of people. Because by that time, there were, I don't know, maybe tens of thousands of people who were following Mahaprabhu. And so he told, better that you return back and again come in a private way. Like that. So um, after that, according to the Chaitanya Bhagavat also, then Mahaprabhu, on his way, returning back to uh, Jagannath Puri, yeah, on his way of returning back to Jagannath Puri, he visited Navadweep. That was the final time. And when he visited Navadweep, as you know, uh, one of the reasons why he took sannyas was to rescue and to save the offenders, you know, because so many of them they were disrespecting Mahaprabhu, Nimai Pandit, who had become Bhavak Nimai and was always in these ecstasies and they were criticizing. So then Mahaprabhu reasoned that I, I, now the purpose of my coming is getting defeated because now they're committing offenses and they will have to suffer hellish punishment from this. But uh, I want to save them. And that was one of the reasons that he, like an external reason, that he took sannyas. Because in the Vedic culture, a sannyasi has to be offered obeisances. Uh, so he said, by offering obeisances to me, all their sinful reactions and all their offenses will be mitigated. So this is what happened. Uh, in, after Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas, left, and all of that, so much time had passed by, a few years, and now he returned. And now people came you got to read the description in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. 
there were so many throngs of people that just by their coming from all directions. Like, can you imagine? We know who Jaitanya Mahaprabhu is. But if we suddenly heard that Mahaprabhu is there in Navadweep, right now, you can go. You can go and see him. What would you do? It doesn't matter what restrictions, lockdowns, laws, any, even if we have to cross the, the ocean on some kind of rowboat, <laughs> we would try to make it there. Yeah? So all these people were coming from all directions. And the jungles along the way, they were being completely cleared just by the movement of the people. And then when they came to the Ganga, the, the very powerful Ganga River, what happened? Everyone had to cross the river. And everyone, and they were lame people, blind people, there, anyone was coming. And they were just whatever was available to float on, like banana trees, you know, and overturned clay pots. Everyone was crossing. Huh? And it was just, all you could see was heads. This is what described in Chaitanya Bhagavat. Huh? And not one single person drowned huh? by the potency of Mahaprabhu. So they all came to see Mahaprabhu and to receive their forgiveness. That's where Devananda Pandit was forgiven and a few others. So, yes. And, and so then the third time, I was talking about why Mahaprabhu went to Vrindavan. Why the six Goswamis went to Vrindavan to reside there. Why all of our Acharyas have gone there. Why? Because Drishyaman Prakash is there, but also for those who are very elevated and advanced, Aprakat Prakash. Those same Leelas which were being performed are still going on there. And that's why the six Goswamis could travel from one part of Braj to another, staying under a tree one night here, one night there, and completely mad in Prem. Premon Mada Vashad Ashesha Tashaya Rasto Pramatto Sada. Pramatto means mad, crazy, in separation mood. Because they were seeing the pastimes. They were witnessing the pastimes. And when they would write, more and more pastimes would be revealed in their hearts. That's why if someone wants to understand Krishna Lila, one has to read 10th Canto, and then you have to read the commentaries of the Rupanuga Acharyas. And, and you have to read the literatures written by Rupa, Sanatan, Jiva Goswami, all, because they've revealed everything. That's why when we sing the Hari Harai Nama Krishna song, every night after Tulsi, what do we say? Echai Gosai Jave Braje Koilo Vas. Echai Gosai Jave. Jave means they, they went. Where did they go? Vraje Koilo Vas. They went and lived in Braj. And then what did they do there? Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Koilo Prakash. Prakash means what? Fully manifested. All of Radha and Krishna's Nitya Leelas, they fully manifested in Braj. That's why Anande Bolohari Bhaja Vrindavan. Huh? All of you worship Vrindavan with Ananda and Bolohari chanting the names of Krishna. Sri Guru Vaishnava Pade Madjai Aman. Completely absorb your mind in the lotus feet of Sri Guru and Vaishnavas. Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koryash Nam Samkirtan Koi Narotamogas. My whole Asha, my whole hope, Maratam Das Thakur is saying, 
my whole expectation, hope, inner desire, the fulfillment of that is lying where? Sri Guru Vaishnava Pade. Pada Padma, Kori Ash. It is there in the lotus feet of Sri Guru and Vaishnavas. Therefore, Nam Sankirtan Kori Narotam Das. So in this way, uh, even Mahaprabhu is coming to Vrindavan. All the six Goswamis are coming. All of the Rupanuga Vaishnavas are coming. And everyone wants to leave their body there. Why? Because the pastimes are going on there. You see. No, the ordinary person, they have only the Drishyaman Prakash. But that is also good for the Vaishnavas. It is good because just like Giriraj Govardhan, he is still remaining. I should finish now? Uh, I can do the art tomorrow. I'm happy no, 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 no. I'll finish. I'll finish. Yeah, thanks. I forgot the time that we, we said yesterday. Um, that we, can, we can finish till 7. Okay. 7 would be a good, good time. Okay, we, can do we, art we start at... What time did we start? 6. 6. 40, uh, 5.45. 5.45, yeah. 545. Okay. Okay, yeah. so we'll do that. I'll just finish by saying, um, what was I saying? That's it's good that for us to have the Drishti Man Prakash. It's still good for us. Yeah, so devotees, like you're at your we have faith, we have Shraddha created in our heart by the pure Vaishnavas. So when we go there to Giriraj, although we still have the Drishti Man Prakash, but that is actually a transcendental manifestation for our mundane eyes. And gradually, as our faith deepens, as our intensity of our bhakti deepens, that manifestation begins to also reciprocate. Huh? That's why the Goswamis would do every day Govardhan Parikrama. Sanatana Goswami would walk Vrindavan Parikrama first, then walk all the way to Govardhan, do the entire Govardhan Parikrama, then walk to Mathura and do some uh, begging, Madhukari, and then walk back to Vrindavan. That's how much he was doing every day, and even in his old age. So that's why Krishna had to come to Sanatana Goswami and say, now you are old. You do not need to walk so far. Huh? And he gave him this stone from Govardhan, Govardhan Shila, with his imprint of his lotus foot there. Just walk around this, and then you have done the Govardhan Parikrama like that. So Srila Gurudev's beautiful presentation of our Braj Mandala Parikrama book is uh, very sweet to uh, read and to absorb what Gurudev is giving. And uh, the more that we do this throughout this month, then what will happen? Because on, on this earth there is also Drishyaman Prakash. We can remember in our minds. I remember like our Bhaktivedanta Sridhar Maharaj, he liked to do this sometimes when he was preaching at Gurudev's festival in Germany one time and Gurudev told him to speak. So what he did, he stood up and then he said, okay, now we're all going to go on Braj Mandala Prikrama in our minds. <laughs> And then he began describing, okay, now we're starting here, and then we're going to this forest, and then we're going there in our minds. Mm -hmm. So that Drishyaman Prakash is also powerful. I think we can sense that, because here we are, we're not there, but when we think of that place in our mind, here is Gopinath Bhavan, and right in front is Yamuna Devi, huh? And as we're walking around Vrindavan, we're seeing all. And this, this is actually Drishyaman Prakash we're experiencing. But that is the beginning of Vrindavan manifesting. So one day, in one lifetime, <laughs> we'll have that, that complete vision. Gaur Prema Shri Braj Mandala Prikrama Ki Jai, Shri Guru Deva Ki Jai, Shri Guru Deva Ki Jai, Ki Jai. Sachi Nandana Gaur Hari Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Govind Ki Jai, Shri Gaur Arti Ki Jai, Shri Radha Krishna Dubal Arti Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Pramani, Manchakapitriyascha, Kripa Sindhu Deva Japa Kitanam Pavavyo, Vaishnavi.
three weeks project, rebuilding, replacing. Size Vigraha went to New York and the boys haven't brought him back yet. So there's a nice small Murti. This is the actual room and furniture where Srila Narayan Maharaj stayed 14 times for more than a week. Tulsi Devi. We're going to keep her in the house and out in the, by the windows in the sun in the winter.